The West Penra Papers A Journey Through the Multiverse The Second Level of Learning HTTP colon slash slash westpenry.com Appendix A, Paper Number 2 Updates on the Remarkable Michael Lee Hill Case Part 2 The World Teacher of the New Era By Wes Penra, Saturday, November 17, 2012 HTTP colon slash slash westbenry.com Part 3 6 Giant UFO Base Under Lake Erie Michael is pretty sure, and has got it confirmed, that the people he met at the Sirius Rising Festival were Syrians connected with SAALM in Pine Gap, Australia, i.e. they were of the Marduk clan. It has now, more or less, become an official version that the Syrians, which I prefer to call them, as the readers know, consist of at least two clans, the Serpent Clan and the Ram Clan, Enki's Clan and Enlil's Clan, but more significantly, the Marduk Clan, of Enki's Serpent Clan, and the incoming Syrians, the Ram Clan. We have been told that the Marduk Clan is more or less in charge of Earth, and the incoming A.AM.I are here to clean house. Personally, I believe it's just a show so that we can get distracted while the real nano takeover is happening. But that's just for the records, let's continue with Michael's story, which gets more and more interesting, and perhaps bizarre, depending on how we look at it. Still, it fits into the bigger picture like hand in glove. So, it's important here to distinguish between the Marduk slash S.A.A.L.M people Michael met in New York and the UFOs over Lake Erie, Virginia, Norway and other places in the world, which are the incoming Syrians. This has also been confirmed to Michael by Dr. A.R. Borden of LPGC. There are with no doubt a lot of UFO bases on our planet. Some of them are pure military, using reverse-engineered alien technology while others are shared bases between the military and different star races, mostly of the Syrian alliance, and some are pure alien UFO bases. They are located all over the world, even in such remote areas as the Arctic and Antarctica, or especially in those remote places, I should say, but also in places like the Andes mountain ranges in South America, where one of the biggest UFO bases is allegedly located. Every big continent has them, as it seems. In North America, the biggest one in the world, allegedly, is located in Lake Erie, and much of it is supposedly underwater. There is no one who can debate it anymore, the UFO phenomenon of the American Northeast is a proven fact. It has been going in, in recorded history, for more than 100 years, and the reports of sightings back in 1880 can be traced back to the vicinity of Lake Erie. In modern time, it's been debated for decades that Lake Erie harbors a base, perhaps both underwater and underground near the lake, as we shall see in a moment. Back in the old days, when UFOs were still called flying saucers, there were a lot of sightings around Lake Erie. It was very common that people saw them in broad daylight, because those flying saucers appeared more solid than the lights that are more commonly seen today. The infamous U.S. Air Force Project Grudge later Project Blue Book launched investigations several times to research sightings of otherworldly craft near Lake Erie. Their conclusions appeared in cut and dried reports buried within with columns of statistics. No wonder, as in reality, they were probably investigating themselves. In the beginning of the 1950s, but we know it was even earlier than that, the President of the United States made treaties with the Syrian alliance, in this case, the Greys, let the aliens do their abductions and got technology back. In the beginning, people around the world could see flying saucers that were indeed military reverse-engineered alien craft hover over the lake, but were of course common in many other places of the world. The more interesting investigations in that time was performed by nameless, ominous men, looking quite identical to each other who only identified themselves as representatives of the United States government. These mysterious men interrogated the witnesses, trying to intimidating them into silence. These men, with their specific characteristics, became known in the flying saucer circles as the men in black. The results of their investigations were never released. Alien clones, somebody? Today, 
most people think of Men in Black as three entertaining comedic films, released on purpose so the masses can laugh, both at the film and at those who think it has some real substance to it, but back in the 50s no one was laughing. Men in Black often appeared after sightings near Lake Erie and it was back then that prominent flying saucer investigators such as Major Donald Kehoe, Gray Barker and Morris Jessup focused some of their attention on the mysterious combings and goings of the unidentified aerial craft haunting Erie. National organizations such as the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization, APRO, and National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena, NACAP, also had thick files on sightings in and around the growingly eerie Lake Erie. Researcher Robin S. Swope recently compiled a very impressive casebook of stunning sightings occurring around southern Lake Erie over the past few years. In his book, a hidden underwater UFO base in Lake Erie Swope describes sustained UFO flaps and many sightings of massive craft plunging into the lake. He spotlights an amazing encounter between the U.S. Coast Guard and a UFO. They witnessing a mammoth craft landing on the lake and launching a flurry of small scout ships. Of course, as is the norm, the mainstream American media chose to ignore the incident concentrating their attention on the travails of Britney Spears. The record of incidents since 2000 has ticked upwards and it's safe to say that more UFOs are being tracked, seen and encountered in the Lake Erie area than during all previous years. Swopes writes in a blog post that recently places on the western part of the lake such as Sandusky and Cleveland have been hotbeds of UFO activity and similar lights have been filmed, making them a YouTube sensation. These UFOs have been investigated by world-famous UFO researchers and Cleveland ufologist Aaron Clark in the March 8, 2007 Cleveland Plain Dealer declared that some believe there's a UFO base on the bottom of the lake. As a matter of fact, not only the lights in the sky have been reported in mainstream media, but so have also the alleged underwater-slash-underground bases. Here is some evidence of that. Sunday, September 18, 2011 does Lake Erie harbor an underwater UFO base? Around 9 p.m. on Saturday, September 17, 2011 unknown airborne phenomenon was observed over Lake Erie near western Erie County, Pennsylvania by two households. Two residents of Japan Street in Mill Creek Township had stepped outside for a smoke when they noticed six orange glowing objects in the sky. Car alarms and police sirens had gone off at the same time as the incident and the pair went over to their neighbor's house to verify what they were seeing. Here is his testimony as per the MUFONE database. It was approximately 9 to 9.10 p.m. My neighbor and his friend knocked on my door and started to tell me about these abnormal lights they saw in the sky. Then we saw one orangish light in the sky. It was north slash northwest from my house, so it appeared to be above Lake Erie. The light was visible for about a minute. It appeared to be moving west, left in the sky, slightly, the light started to fade a little bit, then completely disappeared. During this time the light moved up and down slightly. The light was orange, but didn't appear to be a fireball. It was not making any sounds that we could hear. My neighbor and his friend then told me that maybe four to five minutes before, they stepped outside their house to smoke. They saw six orange lights, like the one I saw. The lights appeared to be north slash northwest, again appearing to be above Lake Erie, they ran into their front yard to get a better look. The six lights appeared to be in some sort of formation, moving together. During this time multiple car alarms in our neighborhood alarmed, I heard these while I was inside my house, the car alarms were on different streets. After about a minute or two, they came and knocked on my door, that is when I saw the one light I previously mentioned. When I first saw the object, I wasn't sure what it was, planes usually appear higher in the sky. Also I've never seen a plane with an orange light like that. I really couldn't think of any logical explanations, especially after the story my neighbor and his friend told me of seeing six lights. We all found it to be slightly odd that there were a number of car alarms that had gone off as well. I have no clue what it was, but it was definitely out of the ordinary. The witness had contacted me on Facebook within minutes of the sighting asking if I had heard anything about the phenomenon, his description of the object was similar to the UFO filmed over Moscow on September 9 of this year. 
When the witness saw this video he said the object was very very similar to what he encountered on the 17th. Could this be the same or same type of object? Southern Lake Erie has been a hot spot of UFO and aerial phenomenon lately. One of the chapters in my latest book Erie Erie, Tales of the Unexplained from Northwestern Pennsylvania, The History Press, July 2011, is titled A Hidden Underwater UFO Base in Lake Erie. In this chapter I recount the mass of UFO sightings above and below the waters of Lake Erie within the past few years. Massive objects being reported crashing into the waters on the lake's southern shore, an amazing incident of a large UFO landing on the icy lake that launched scout ships witnessed and recorded by coast guards, and many more. On August 8 of this year, a fireball was detected by all sky cameras from the Southern Ontario Meteor Network at 1.22 a.m. EDT According to Space.com It was picked up over Lake Erie and proceeded south-southeast over Ohio, said Bill Cook, head of NASA's Meteoroid Environments Office at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, ALA. The meteor was last tracked north of Gustavus, Ohio, and the potential impact zone for meteorite fragments is a region east of Cleveland. A similar object impacted in Lake Erie in 2008. On November 13, 2008 the Ashtabula Star Beacon reported that multiple witnesses from Ashtabula to Madison, Ohio had heard and witnessed a large object crash into Lake Erie's southern shore. At first police and local authorities thought it to be an aircraft but Madison Township Police SGT. Rick Barson is quoted in the Ashtabula Star Beacon as saying, We had enough information from two people in separate places that seemed to have seen the same thing, but we had trouble getting a good description that would fit the type of craft we believed this plane could be. Later NASA would claim that the object entering the lake was a meteorite, but that is not what the witnesses saw, they saw a craft of some sort. Lake Erie has a long history of unexplained aerial and underwater phenomenon. For centuries Lake Erie has been host to a phenomena that many in past eras have called wizard lights. In the December 12, 1867 issue of the Brooklyn Eagle there is an article A Curious Phenomenon on Lake Erie in which is recounted the instance of a burning ghost ship seen off Erie. The writer reports that local sailors have been seeing these lights for over 50 years throughout the lake. When rescuers would venture off toward the burning lights, they would simply vanish. Soon the sailors would no more go to the rescue when these lights appeared, they knew that they were something odd, something otherworldly. Recently places on the western part of the lake such as Sandusky and Cleveland have been hotbeds of UFO activity and similar lights have been filmed, making them a YouTube sensation. These UFOs have been investigated by world-famous UFO researchers and even the focus of such cable television shows such as UFO Hunters and UFO Files. Cleveland ufologist Aaron Clark in the March 8, 2007 Cleveland Plain Dealer declares that some believe there's a UFO base on the bottom of the lake. After compiling incidents from MUFON, eyewitnesses, and other UFO databases, I have noticed that there have been an alarming amount of diverse UFO sightings above and below the surface of Lake Erie within the past decade. Does Lake Erie play host to some sort of underwater UFO slash USO base? Something is happening below its murky waves, something unexplained. That's no moon, who, or what, is buzzing Northeast Ohio? Volume 15, Issue 21 published September 26, 2007 Many uncrazy Clevelanders have seen strange lights in the sky. Who, or what, is buzzing Northeast Ohio? By John Lasker To suggest that Northeast Ohio could be witness to the next mass UFO sighting does not officially make you a member of the tinfoil hat crowd. If you believe even just a few of the witnesses, Cleveland and its surrounding communities might already be a hot spot. During the previous two years, the Cleveland Ufology Project, considered the oldest of its kind on this side of the globe, has documented 20 credible sightings. The 2005 documentary Dan Aykroyd, Unplugged on UFOs highlighted the peculiar lights over Lake Erie near East Lake, where witnesses reported their latest sighting just this past June. Earlier this year, an orb was videotaped over the Key Bank Tower during a peace rally, and the incident made it on the CBS Nightly News. The hype continues 
literally hundreds of thousands have downloaded Internet videos of Northeast Ohio UFOs. The Cleveland Office of Homeland Security has investigated. And one of the East Lake UFO witnesses says he's signed a contract with a History Channel for a documentary. If you take all of the people in Ohio who are interested in this subject, I bet half of them are from that part of the state, says Central Ohio-based William E. Jones, State Director for Ohio MUFON, or Mutual UFO Network. A lot of folks up there have seen things over the years. More people are interested up there. I don't know why. Sam Phillips has long been a fixture of Cleveland's music scene. He's an accomplished drummer and hand snapper, and appeared on the Arsenio Hall show. When interviewed for this story, however, he was homeless and sleeping at the homes of friends and family. Phillips taped a strange light spinning and hovering over the Key Bank Tower on March 10, during a peace rally. This is not about me says Phillips, who admits he has become obsessed with what he saw that night. There's a pattern here. There's a riddle here. And I want answers. I want an explanation. He believes it wasn't coincidence the sighting took place over a peace rally. During the sighting, he recalls saying that our brothers and sisters are going to come down from the universe and humble our ass. Phillips' story, however, is but a sidebar in the current wave of Northeast Ohio UFO mania. Taking center stage is Lake Erie, and Michael Lee Hill of East Lake. Hill, like Phillips, is a musician. In 2001, Grammy Award winner and guitar legend Steve Vai picked Hill as the winner of a national guitar contest. Hill is gregarious, upbeat, and likable. He's unconventional and complex. He's certain that the UFOs he has seen are targeting him. I've had contact my whole life, he says. I remember asking my mother, why do Santa's elves keep visiting me? The recent visitations started in earnest five years ago, not far from the coal-burning power plant, he says. While walking on the beach, not far from his home, Hill said he witnessed a top hat-shaped craft hovering and pulsating over the shoreline. This same area is also famous in UFO lore for a 1988 encounter documented by the Coast Guard. Hill started taking a video camera to the lake front. Since then he's captured scores of bright lights that appear to hover over Lake Erie. He's uploaded many of his videos to YouTube, and those caught the attention of David Sarada, who directed the Ackroyd documentary. Hill created the music for Sarada's latest project, From Here to Andromeda. Hill also says he recently signed a contract for a History Channel project, but the channel did not return Free Times calls. I really do consider myself a spiritual messenger, I know it sounds freaky, says Hill, adding that the UFO filmed over the Key Bank Tower is one of the same orbs he captured over Lake Erie. There's a huge story unfolding here. I think they're absolutely sending us a message. I believe they are here to help us become a galactic society. At the other end of the spectrum is East Lake resident Gary Strauss, who says adamantly, I'm not one of those UFO people. He's a chemist and a supervisor at a local laboratory. He's lived in his home on the lake since 1984, in the same neighborhood as Hill, though they've never met. Early on the morning of June 21, Strauss and his son saw four bright lights, shaped like the tip of a sharp marker, high above the water. The lights were in a line parallel with the shoreline, positioned at 11 o'clock and 30 degrees above the horizon. Then one vanished. Then another. Soon all four were gone. Suddenly, they reappeared in the shape of a diamond. Then they went flat again. This went on for more than an hour. He called the East Lake police and they dispatched an officer. Strauss remembers the officer saying, What is that? The following day, his son checked the internet for lights over Lake Erie and found one of Hill's videos. He recalls his son shouting, that's it. That's what we saw. But unlike other Lake Erie witnesses, Strauss doesn't believe the lights are extraterrestrial. He guesses they're the result of government or aerospace industry experiments with new technology. They're bouncing radar off some type of object, he speculates. Some form of radar reflection technology. I'm just making an educated guess. 
Nevertheless, he's intrigued. I look outside a lot more. I want to see it again, says Strauss. This time, I'm going to have my camera. But he rejects the suggestion that it's anything more than curiosity, no. I'm not obsessive. Absolutely not. The East Lake police actually had two witnesses that night. A detective, who asked not to be named, told the Free Times that he too saw the lights, but from a different vantage point. The East Lake police asked the Cleveland Office of Homeland Security to look into the sighting, and the detective says he was told later that on the night of the sighting, the Canadian Coast Guard was near the opposite side of the lake searching for a man who had been reported missing. A Canadian Coast Guard helicopter dropped flares, connected to miniature parachutes, over the water. Later it was discovered the man had drowned. Strauss finds this implausible, believes the lights appeared in a straight line, then vanished, then reappeared in a diamond formation. The Bush administration reportedly has funneled billions to the aerospace industry to develop space-based weapons under the guise of missile defense. Secret military space plane programs are believed to have been revived as well. Another possibility are LAGIOs, or laser geodynamics satellites. Publicly, the government says two are in orbit, and both are roughly the size of a basketball. They are made of brass and partially covered with a retroreflection material that returns light in the direction it comes from, similar to a road sign. There's also NASA's Glenn Research Center at the Plum Brook site in Sandusky. The site is home to the world's largest space environment simulation chamber. That chamber will test NASA's new spacecraft, Orion, which will take the U.S. back to the moon. Recent upgrades to the Plum Brook site will also allow it to test next-generation lunar landers, robotic systems and military and commercial aircraft, according to NASA's website. So here I come walking out of the TV station one night in November maybe a decade ago after our early evening newscast, says Ted Henry of New Channel 5. In perfect formation there were five large objects flying smoothly in my direction. It was stunning. What I saw was the undersides of five flat objects flying in exact formation. The front two were enormous, maybe the size of several football fields, and the three trailing were smaller, flying in a slightly irregular pattern. What do I think they were? All I can really tell you is what I saw. Henry has talked about his sighting many times on the air. He puts the experience this way, one thing is certain, for people who see something in the sky, as I did over Cleveland years ago, it can be a life-changing experience. But has anybody ever seen those underground bases in the Lake Erie vicinity? Is there any first-hand witness to those, someone who has basically been under there and seen them? Well, I'm sure most people would expect a no to all those questions, but supposedly, there are those who have actually been there and walked around in at least some of them. One of these people is allegedly Dr. A.R. Borden of LPGC. The reason he would have had the privilege is because his connection with the incoming A.AM.I group of Syrians. The following conversation was taking place in December 2011 between Dr. Borden and Michael Lee Hill in a live chat. Dr. Borden, A.R. you know what's down below in places in central and southern Ohio? Michael Lee Hill, MLH I do not know what is below, I hear a very old base. Anunnaki base in particular? AR, one local man I only know as Bill knows of an access point to what looked like small cities down and off 75. Visited the site with him in 07. Michael, who lives in the area, says to me that Route 75 leads to Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Wes comment. MLH, what does it look like? I am all ears. AR, living quarters carved into soft stone and granite in part. Large round central area. I'd estimate it to be about 200 to 300 feet below surface. This Bill character was quite a guy, used to work at the base near Dayton. So, AR is confirming that this base is not only existing, but also that it is not ours, according to Michael, meaning it is not owned by humanity. AR doesn't have to tell us who owns it, because of all the information we have from elsewhere, we know it's the incoming A.A.M.I. But when comes to the United States, 
why is Ohio the place with the most frequent UFO sightings in America? Is there anything special with that area making it such a large center for the incoming Syrians? Why not some sparsely populated mountain ridge somewhere in a very remote area? In fact, AR says that Michael is sitting on top of the perhaps largest alien underground base in the world. Well, there is actually a good reason why the incoming chose Ohio, and we are going to go into that now. 7. They were beings of huge stature. We know from the Bible, we know from Sidishin's work, and we know from my own papers, that a lot of genetic experimentation and manipulation was taking place here on Earth. Around 500,000 years ago, this planet was taken over by Syrian forces, who later on replaced the slave workers of their own kind with a new species that they created in laboratories by mixing their own DNA with existing species already living here on Earth. That eventually turned into Homo sapiens, or Homo sapiens sapiens, which is us. But there was another genetic line that was created here as well, which resulted in beings who, according to Lord and Lil, contaminated the whole experiment. At one time, Pleiadian giants, so-called fallen angels, descended to Earth and mated with human females, whom they considered irresistible. So, in laboratories they mixed their own giant genes with that of humans, Syrians and even Aryans, from Orion, and the offspring became giants, the infamous Nephilim. They could reach from 6.5 feet to nearly 300 feet in height, and were the ones who built many of the incredible stone formations all over the world, including some of the pyramids. According to the Bible, they all drowned in the flood, but my own research is showing that some of these giants survived the deluge and continued to spread over the world, and once again became men of renown. We also know that Lord Enlil was furious when he found out that species whom he thought were extinct due to the flood had been saved by his stepbrother, Enki. One of these species was the Pleiadian experiment, the Nephilim. However, there was allegedly a compromise made perhaps we could call it a treaty where it was decided that if the Nephilim should be allowed to survive, their DNA needed to be altered to lower their stature. So, in that sense, over generations most of the giants actually became extinct, as these beings now had more human-like offspring. Indeed, with time, it became nearly impossible to tell who was of the Nephilim and who was a normal Homo sapiens. Although, I should add, there are still a few giants alive on this planet, but they are currently residing underground. The Nephilim I am talking about are walking around among us, and no one can tell by just looking at them. Interestingly enough, the spokesman for the secret society, the Priory of Zion, Nicholas Haywood, has started to come out in public revealing some of their inner secrets. The Priory of Zion was mentioned in the book, Holy Blood, Holy Grail in relation to the Jesus and Mary Magdalene bloodline. Michael Lee Hill has had the opportunity to talk to him as well, and Haywood indeed confirmed to Michael that the Jesus and Mary Magdalene bloodline is the Nephilim hybrid bloodline, that goes all the way back to the Anunnaki, as he put it. Michael found it interesting that Haywood mentioned the Anunnaki in this regard. In relation to my own research, I can both confirm and dismiss this, depending on what we mean by the Anunnaki. Most people who use this term for the ancient visitors are taking it from Sitchin's work. Sitchin says that it means those whom to earth from heaven came, and that includes more than one species. I also know from an impeccable source that the man we've come to know as Jesus married a Syrian woman, Mary Magdalene. It's beyond the scope of my knowledge whether Mary Magdalene had both Syrian and Pleiadian blood in her, which would make her a Nephilim, so I will leave it with that. I know, however, that Jesus was Arian, Orion. Now, there is supposedly one way to tell whether a person is of the Nephilim hybrid bloodline or not, and that is to draw their blood and check the CK level. The Nephilim have a sky-high level of creatine kinase in their blood. Sound familiar? In these papers, we are thus far aware of two people with a sky-high amount of CK, Terrell Copeland and Michael Lee Hill. I don't know if anyone has been in contact with Terrell since the blood test, but Michael has had it verified by a number of people in the know that he indeed is of the Nephilim bloodline, and he is quite sure himself that this is the case, because it seems to explain a lot of things for him. 
Now, let's see why Ohio is such a hot spot for UFOs. The author and researcher, Fritz Zimmerman, recently released a book called, The Nephilim Chronicles, Fallen Angels in the Ohio Valley. An introduction to this book, about which Zimmerman has held quite a few lectures, can be found on YouTube. This particular one is a promotion to a lecture he actually held at the Pythagoras Conference in 2011. This is a part of the YouTube text that is posted beneath the video, the emphasis is mine. Discover a giant race called the Daenerys whose remains have been found in Jerusalem, in burial mounds at Stonehenge and the Ohio Valley. Discover the ancient Amorite Babylonian symbols that are evident at Stonehenge and the many Henges in the Ohio Valley. Discover the evidence of advanced mathematics discovered by the Amorites and how it is evident at Stonehenge and within the earthworks in the Ohio Valley. This is a must-read for anyone who wants an affirmation of one of the most mysterious chapters in the Bible. In other words, what Zimmerman exposes in his book and talks about in his lectures, built on his own vast and assuring research on the Nephilim subject, is that they migrated to America and to the Ohio Valley area from all parts of the world, and settled down there. Due to this migration, we can assume that there are a lot of Nephilim hybrids in the Ohio Valley area. Probably, the main reason why the Syrians have the perhaps largest underground base in Ohio is because the Nephilim bloodline moved there. Since the giants of old are being in liaison with the A.AM.I, this could explain why the incoming Syrians have chosen the Lake Erie area as their largest underground base. The Nephilim bloodline is important to the Syrians, even if it wasn't always that way, and this must also be the reason why Michael was born a Nephilim hybrid. For some reason, Michael needs to be of the Nephilim bloodline in order to perform his task.